Chapter 17 in the Mouth of the Dragon Hiccup fell into the dragon's mouth and its teeth snapped shut behind him like a prison door. He was falling through complete darkness, surrounded by a smell so awful it was suffocating. He jerked to a sudden halt as the back of his shirt caught on something and held. Hiccup hung there in the darkness, swaying gently. By a thousand to one chance, his shirt had caught on a spear still stuck in the dragon's throat since his Roman banquet. Hiccup's foot brushed against the wall of what he presumed was the dragon's throat. The dragon's digestive juices stung like acid and he snatched his foot away. Above him, Hiccup could hear the dragon's great tongue sloshing and lunging about his mouth, trying to find Hiccup so he could crunch him to death. He hadn't intended to swallow him whole. A disgusting river of green goo dripped down the puffy red insides of the dragon's throat. Just across from where Hiccup was hanging, green-yellow steam was puffing out of two small holes in the slimy wall. Every now and then, a small explosion set a little flicker of flames shooting out of the holes. How interesting, thought Hiccup, who was strangely calm, because he couldn't quite believe that this was really happening. Those must be where the fire comes from. Viking biologists had wondered for years where the fire that dragons breathed came from. Some said the lungs, others the stomach. Hiccup was the first to discover the fire holes which are too small to see with the naked eye in a normal sized dragon. Way down below, Hiccup could hear the distant rumbling of singing from the dragon's previous meal. A sea dragonus giganticus obviously takes a long time to digest, thought Hiccup. It was indeed still going strong. Humans can be bland, but if you have some salt to hand, a little bit of brine will make them taste divine. The spear was gradually bending over with Hiccup's weight. It was only a matter of time before it broke and he fell to join the breezy optimists in the stomach below. What was worse, the fumes and the heat and the smell were starting to confuse Hiccup so that he no longer really cared. The terrible noise of the dragon's heart beating had entered into Hiccup's chest and forced his own heart to follow the same rhythm. A dragon has to live after all, he found himself thinking, and then he remembered the dragon's words to him as he stood on the cliff top. You'll find that you come round to my point of view once you're inside me. Oh no, thought Hiccup, the dragon's digestion is already working. I need to live. I need to live, he repeated to himself over and over again, trying desperately to block out the dragon's thoughts. There was a horrible creaking noise as the stout Roman spear began to split in two. Chapter 18, The Extraordinary Bravery of Toothless And that would have been the end of Hiccup if it had not been for the extraordinary bravery of a certain toothless daydream. Toothless, if you remember, had refused to join in the battle at Death's Head headland. He was intending to fly off somewhere down the coast a bit and lie low till all was safe again. But he stayed at the highest point for a while, terrorising birds and rabbits. He must have been having a lovely time doing this, for he did not hear the approach of Stoic and the entire tribes of Hooligan and Meathead until Stoic grabbed him around the neck. Where is my son? asked Stoic. Toothless mm -hmm. shrugged his shoulders rudely. Where is my son? bawled Stoic with an awe-inspiring yell so loud that Toothless's ears trembled. Toothless pointed to Death's Head headland. Show me, said Stoic grimly. Under Stoic's fierce eye, Toothless reluctantly flapped off down Death's Head headland, followed by the two tribes. They arrived just in time to see the terrible monster throw Hiccup high in the air and catch him in his mouth like a whelk. So much for the fiendishly clever plan, thought Toothless. He was about to use the opportunity of Stoic's obvious distraction to sneak off to a place of safety when something stopped him. Nobody knows what that something was. It was a moment which changed the whole worldview of the hooligan tribe. For centuries, 
we had believed it was impossible for dragons to consider a selfless thought or a generous action. But what Toothless did next is impossible to explain as being in his own best interests at the time. All his fellow domestic dragons were now flying somewhere over the inner ocean as soon as they heard Fireworm's cry of desert. Those who were hiding in caves or between crevices or crouched in the ferns rose up in a great swarm and abandoned their former masters as fast as their wings could carry them. The wild dragons from Wild Dragon Cliff had left hours before, but something kept Toothless from flying after them. Maybe it was Stoic's heart-rendingly powerless cry of No! that caused him to pause, or maybe somewhere in that self-centred green dragon heart of his, he really was fond of Hiccup and grateful for the hours that he spent looking after him, not shouting at him, telling him jokes and giving him the biggest and juiciest lobsters. Dragons are s -s selfish, argued Toothless to himself. Dragons are heartless and have no m -m mercy. That's what m makes us survivors. Nonetheless, Something made him turn right around and something made him fold his wings back and fly like a dragon blur to the great monster on the cliff tops, which really was not in Toothless's best interest, as I said before. Toothless flew right up the monster's left nostril and started flying up and down the insides of his nose, tickling it with his wings. The sea dragon lunged up and down, wrinkling his nose like crazy and bellowing, Ah! 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 The creature stuck his great talon up his nose in a disgusting fashion and tried to winkle out the tickling flea that was irritating him. Toothless didn't quite get out of the way of the talon at the time and it scratched him on the chest. He hardly felt it though. He was so excited and carried on tickling regardless, dodging the probing dragon claw. Ah! 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 Bellow the sea dragon. Meanwhile, Hiccup was being thrown this way and that inside the dragon's throat as it shook its head from side to side. He was trying desperately to hang on to the spear, which was in danger of becoming dislodged any second. Ah! The dragon finally sneezed and Hiccup, the spear, toothless and a great deal of perfectly revolting snot was scattered over the surrounding countryside. Toothless remembered as he was shooting through the air that boys can't fly. He folded his wings and dived after Hiccup, who was rapidly heading towards the ground. Toothless grabbed hold of Hiccup by the arm and tried to take his weight. Dragon's talons are extraordinarily strong and he was able to break Hiccup's fall, not entirely, but enough so that when Hiccup crashed into the heather, he was travelling reasonably slowly. Stoic came plunging frantically through the grass. He picked up his son and faced the monster, holding his shield over Hiccup's unconscious body. Toothless hid behind Stoic. The green death had recovered from his sneezing fit. He shuffled forwards, bleeding horribly from, from fatal wounds to his chest and throat. He lowered his terrible head till it was on level with the cliff top. And his evil yellow eyes looked straight at Stoic. Time to die for all of us, purred the Green Death. You can't save his life now, you know. You are quite, quite helpless. My fire will melt that shield like butter. The green death opened his mouth. He slowly sucked in a breath. <gasps> Stoic tried to grab onto chunks of heather to hold them fast. But Stoic, Hiccup and Toothless were being dragged slowly but surely towards the gigantic black tunnel that was the monster's open jaws. The green death paused for a moment before he blew out again, enjoying their terror. This is what happens if you don't listen to the dragon law, shrieked Toothless to himself in horror as he peered around the sides of Stoic's cloak. The monster puffed out his cheeks and Stoic and Toothless waited for flames to consume them. But no fire came out. The green death looked very surprised. 
he puffed out his cheeks and blew a little harder. And again, no fire. He tried once more, and now his head seemed to be turning a strange purplish colour with the effort of blowing, and it seemed to be swelling bigger and bigger, as if he was being pumped up with air from the inside. The monster had no idea what was happening. He thrashed around wildly, and his eyes bulged larger and larger, until with a bang that could be heard for hundreds of miles in every direction, the green death blew up right in front of their eyes. This may seem like some sort of miracle or an intervention on the parts of the gods, but in fact, there is a logical explanation. When Hiccup was hanging in the sea dragon's throat, desperately repeating, I need to live, I need to live, to himself, he had taken off his helmet and plugged the horns as hard as he could into the fire holes. It was a perfect fit. So, when the dragon tried to use his fire, the blockage caused a build-up of pressure that eventually grew so great that the green death simply exploded. Now there were pieces of dragon flying in all directions. Stoic and Toothless were incredibly luck lucky not to get hit by anything, standing as close to the explosion as they were. But a single burning dragon tooth, eight foot long, one of the monster's smaller ones exploded straight towards Hiccup. The boy had been dragged out from under the shelter of Stoic Shield by the intake of the monster's breath and was now lying on the ground a couple of feet in front of Stoic and Toothless, completely exposed. Stoic caught the movement of the tooth out of the corner of his eye and flung himself and his shield forward. Only a Viking could have got there in time. Shooting Woodcock with a bow and arrow develops very quick reflexes, so Stoic Shield did save Hiccup's life after all. If it had not been there, the tooth would have impaled Hiccup like a prawn on a stick. As it was, it buried itself deep, deep, deep into the bronze centre of the shield and quivered there, blazing with a green-edged dragon flames. Stoic lifted the shield, terrified that the tooth might have pierced through to his son, but Hiccup was unharmed. His eyes were open and he was listening for something. He was listening for a strange sound that seemed to be coming from the flaming tooth itself. It was a sound of wheezy echoing singing, like the wind blowing through coral caves. And it went something like this. I tell the mighty big blue whale, his life is over soon. With one swish of this armoured tail, I put out the sun and moon. The winds and gales are quivering when I begin to roar. The waves themselves are shivering and trembling back to shore. Listen, said Hiccup happily, just before he passed out. The supper is singing. <laughs>